So Riverside just rolled out their editing function. It's really similar to Descript. And as far as Riverside's editing service, I think that there are honestly more cons than pros. So what it does is it's, it transcribes your podcast and allows you to edit the transcript in a way that also edits the audio of your podcast. Very useful feature. I find the editor to be very clunky, and okay. uh, especially compared to Descript, which Descript can be clunky too at times, but they're working on it. They're improving it all the time. I actually use Descript to edit a few audio video podcasts. I actually use it to edit this podcast okay. that you're listening to or watching right now. I don't use just Descript, not to get in the weeds, but I use Pro Tools to process the audio and make it sound better. Mm -hmm. And then I'll pull that over into Descript. It's a really powerful platform, like it a lot. It's just not an end all be all solution yet. Welcome to the Pod Circle Podcast, where we provide practical tips and insights for every podcaster. Whether you're just getting started or you're already a seasoned podcast pro, these conversations dive into all the topics that matter most to you. All right, Kyle, today we are digging into AI and how it's changing the podcast game. I feel like over the last several episodes, we have talked a lot about AI. It just keeps coming up. And so also just in our cultural moment, I think we would be remiss to not identify and talk about the ways that AI really is entering into the podcast space. So everywhere I look these days, I'm seeing articles, memes, and either a general fear or a love for the rise of AI. So over the next two episodes, we're really going to highlight a few different ways that podcasters are utilizing AI to simplify their lives and the platforms that are using AI and winning, we think are doing that well. We're also going to tell you why we think AI is the way of the future, but how at this point, it's not the end all be all for us podcasters. And today we're going to talk specifically about the platforms that are offering AI assistance in recording and editing. You know that recording and editing matters a lot to us here, so I'm excited to, to dive deep into two different platforms, Riverside and Descript, and we're going to talk about where they excel and where maybe they're currently lacking. So Kyle, you use both of these platforms quite a bit, so I'm going to lean hard on you to walk us through this and ask all the questions that I know our listeners have. Yeah, I'll do the best that I can. Yes, good. I'm excited that you are all here today, um, and I just want to remind you of a couple of things before we jump into this conversation. First, we post all of our shows on YouTube, so you can head over to Pod Circle's page to subscribe, follow along with this episode, leave comments, engage with us. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear how you're engaging and using AI. All right, let's get right into it by talking first about how Riverside.fm is utilizing AI. So we all know Riverside as a really great solution to record high quality remote interviews. So they're awesome at that. They're yeah. really well known with that. But recently they've been rolling out a ton of new AI features kind of on the editing side of things. So where you can not only record your edit episode there, but then also edit it using their transcript editor, very similar to Descript. If you guys are, are used to that, we're going to talk about that as well. Mm -hmm. So they're doing a lot in that space and they're trying to be a complete solution for recording yeah. and editing. So Riverside is clearly competing with Descript. Descript, if you listen to our one of our recent episodes, we talked a little bit about how they just acquired Squadcast. Squadcast yeah. is and has been a main competitor of Riverside. And so here's how they're both using AI. First thing we're going to talk about is for show notes writing. And we're going to do it by breaking down the pros and the cons. So I'll talk a little bit about the pros. In terms of Riverside and how they do show notes, use AI to generate show notes, I think it has a ton of potential. And I think it's an yeah. obvious and very smart thing for Riverside to offer. And especially at the price point. So it's only offered currently in their pro plan, which starts at about mm -hmm. $24 a month. So for that $24 a month, and this is where I think it shines the most, is yeah. they'll write your episode summary for you. So again, they transcribe the episode, they use AI to transcribe it, produces a transcription, and then they have a very chat GPT like function where they will take it and they'll write an episode summary for you and they'll write a handful of key takeaways. I think it's really powerful. I think it's a, a great consumer product and obviously a really great way to create some competition with Descript. And just to note, just like ChatGPT, if you feed it a quality transcript and a quality prompt, mm -hmm. you're going to get better results. And I think they're going to continue to improve on this prompt as they move forward. Yeah, I think there's a lot of pros here and you get a lot of features for the $24 a month for their pro plan. Yeah, I've heard you say that it's a great solution for a budget conscious podcaster who's willing to do a little bit of those extra works 
and edit it to sound like them, especially because it's going to spit something out that'll be a good starting place, right? I think yep. I talk a lot about that when, from a content perspective, if you're using chat GPT, you have to go back in and make it feel like you, or it's going to feel like it was written by chat GPT. So mm. I think the cons here are that it lacks any sense of brand voice. I am very passionate about a brand voice. It also still needs editing by a human to sound like a human wrote it. There are some features there. I think it'll become better as it becomes more human learning. I get it. But then I think this is also a really um, big one. The timestamps will be off as soon as you make any edits to the podcast. Yeah. So talk about those timestamps. What are those? Yeah. So if you'll see in our show notes, we give you timestamps for different parts of our conversation where you can say like, okay, these are the highlights of the conversation kind of to guide you through. But we can't create those timestamps until after you've done your first edit because behind the scenes, we literally just stopped and restarted a whole section because we didn't like how it flowed. Yep. Or maybe I'm saying like too much and we cut that out. Your timestamps will be off if you're going in and making those little edits. So yep. unless you're going straight through with no changes, which some podcasts do, don't know that I would suggest that, those timestamps are going to be a little bit off and you're not going to be able to use them and have to go back and adjust them. Which, again, if you've got the time and capacity to do that, it's a good starting point. Yeah. Also, it's not going to provide in your show notes any additional links to anything you talk about in the episode. So if you talk about a book, the book will be in there, but you'll have to go back and link it. You'll have to link resources or social handles or pretty much anything else that you want to link from the episode. Um, we have an episode all about how to make money with your podcast, and I'm a big fan of affiliate links you're not going to have your affiliate link in there. So again, you're going to have to go back and revisit it. Just like almost anything AI generated content, it's not an end all be all solution, but I do think it's a great starting point. I agree. I think it's at a really great price point for folks that are just getting in, especially if they're kind of hobbyists, they, they don't have really maybe, maybe a plan to monetize your podcast. If they have a little bit of extra time and you can tweak it and learn it and get to know it, uh, I do think it's a good solution. Okay. So the second thing we're going to talk about is Riverside's editing function. So Riverside just rolled out their editing function. It's really similar to Descript and another platform that's similar to Descript called Otter.ai, both transcription mm -hmm. platforms where you can edit, really cool platforms. And as far as Riverside's editing service, I think that there are honestly more cons than pros at this point. Yeah. They got to work on it. So what it does is it's, it transcribes your podcast and allows you to edit the transcript in a way that also edits the audio of your podcast. Very useful feature. I find the editor to be very clunky, and okay. uh, especially compared to Descript, which Descript can be clunky too at times, but I, it's much better. They're working on it. They're improving it all the time. I actually use Descript to edit a few audio video podcasts. I actually use it to edit this podcast uh, okay. that you're listening to or watching right now. I don't use just Descript, not to get in the weeds, but I use Pro Tools to process the audio and make it sound mm -hmm. better. And then I'll pull that over into Descript. Okay. It, it's a really powerful platform. Like it a lot. It's just not an end-all, be-all solution yet. But jumping back over to Riverside, it's, it's just not even close to being there for me yet as even like an intermediate to advanced level editing service for your podcast. But yeah. I understand why they're using it because they're trying to compete with Descript and all that good stuff. So admittedly, I haven't used it in a while. It's, it's probably been a couple months. I'm a part of their like Riverside Facebook group where half the time people are saying, oh, we love the new AI generated show notes feature. It's so helpful. It saves me a lot of time. Awesome. And then equal parts, people are complaining because they hate the editor. It's laggy. It crashes. They need to reload. So, you yeah. know, they're figuring it out in real time and they've still got work to do, but I don't have any reason to think that they're not going to continue improving on that stuff because again, there's competition in the market and they want to retain subscribers. Yeah. Yeah. So the other thing there is magic clips. I think this is a really cool and kind of obvious thing for them to do as well. AI goes through and pulls out, you know, 45 to 60 second clips that mm -hmm. their AI tools can then shorten, transcribe, and you can release those reels on your Instagram, TikTok, all the places. So really yeah. smart offering from them. Similarly to the editing function, I just find it clunky. I like it better yeah. than their episode editing function. I think it's powerful, but it doesn't always pull great clips. Like I'm really, no. if I'm editing an episode and also pulling the clips for it, those clips are so important. Like they, they really yes. need to establish the host as an authority, as an expert, you know, if they're in the entertainment space, as an entertainer, 
those clips yeah. matter. You can't just pull things out of context and expect them, you know, in a long form podcast and expect them to make sense in a 45 second clip. So still a big fan of having a human being who knows your brand, knows the goals of your podcast. What are mm -hmm. you trying to market? What are you trying to sell? Just a big fan of a human being doing that. Now, are there some other AI tools once you grab those clips that can co do fancy captions and stuff like that? Yes, we're going to talk about that stuff probably in our part two of this episode. But for me, yeah. Magic Clips is better done either in Descript, which is what I use to clip out clips mm -hmm. from this podcast. And then our, our video editors are using Adobe Premiere and maybe a couple other plugins and tools to make those clips really, really great for our clients. Yeah, I think the AI section of this, from my experience, is just really random. It pulls the most random clips. And the other podcasts that I produce, a lot of times we'll go in and use that as a base to find like the clips that we want, and then we'll pull it out and process it in another platform or yeah. another tool. And so that's, it's helpful to see the transcript and pick the, make the clips you want, but then the clips that they're bringing up from Magic Clips are never the ones that I would pick. So there's lots of room for improvement there for sure. And I think that they're, I, don't quote me on this. I'm, I'm not totally sure. But the yeah. last time I looked, they pull like five or so clips. You yeah. might have one or two of them there that are like, oh, this, you know, they actually did that a pretty work. good yeah. job. And then maybe you can peel back the beginning and end and kind of, you know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. to me, it's not a, it's not a solution. Yes. It's giving you a starting point that you can go back in and then find some clips. So that was yeah. a really great synopsis, Kyle. But I've also heard you talk about Descript a lot. So what do you like about that platform? I like Descript because for one, you can record directly into it. So if, again, mm -hmm. they just acquired Squadcast, so you can use Squadcast to record remote interviews like this one. So, but what it does, like we said, it transcribes your episode and then- mm -hmm you can edit the transcription. So there's a really powerful feature where you can click remove filler words and you can even select mm. the, the filler words that you want to use. So if, if you're me, I use a lot of ums. That is my verbal yeah. tick. It's bad, okay? They come through sometime in this podcast, but usually not because I'm using oftentimes Descript to go and isolate those ums. And then you can click remove and it's not only gonna remove it from the transcript, but you can also have it remove, the, remove it from the audio. So I think that's really, really cool. But you always have to go back and check because what if someone says and um or uh um, you know, if it's kind of connected to another word, you can hear the edit and it sounds weird. And I'm mm -hmm. for me as an audio editor, that's never gonna fly. I will no. rather leave the filler word than have it sound odd and the listener's like, this just feels this doesn't feel like yeah. a way someone would talk, okay? So again, awesome tool but the human has to go back in and mess with mm -hmm. a little bit. So another thing I really like about Descript is that they have a standalone app, which I don't think that Riverside has just yet. It's, it's all mm -hmm. kind of based in Chrome, which Riverside's only at this point compatible with Chrome uh, browser and Edge, Microsoft Edge. I don't know. I haven't used a PC in 20 years. <laughs> De Descript has a standalone app that's on my computer and most of the time works well. It's a little bit buggy, I will say, but I'm also kind of on an older Mac. I don't, you know, I just have to say it, talk about how it performs for me. And then like I mentioned, they acquired Squadcast, similar to Riverside in that you can record remote interviews in high quality, awesome feature, but I haven't really used Squadcast integration into Descript. Uh, so I yeah. don't know, I don't know how well that's working. I know it's kind of a new rollout, a new acquisition, but I'll be curious to try that out. So those are the cons. There's a lot, again, that I like about Descript. But like I said, the cons are the app can be buggy. I was editing an episode yesterday, froze up on me. Sometimes the editing tools can, can lock up, but it's doing a lot of work, to be honest. It's processing audio yeah. and video edits in real time. There can be a lot going on. And if, and if you're like me, I've got a thousand things, uh, you know, apps running on my computer at the same time. And that probably totally. doesn't help matters. So the other thing as an audio editor who has been working in Pro Tools, for uh, almost two decades now. It is severely mm -hmm. lacking on the audio mixing side of things. So all okay. the, the plugins, and, and this is going to get nerdy for a second, but EQ, compression, <laughs> all the things that I would always use in an audio podcast and do always use in an audio podcast, they're there, but they're not good. They're hard to find. I, I wish I could take my third-party plugins and that, use them in Descript. And man, that I, would, I would be one step closer to even just eliminating having to use Pro Tools to process the audio. But for right now, if I am using Descript, I'm processing all the audio over in Pro Tools first, pulling it over into Descript. So like we're going to say with all AI tools, awesome tool, love it. It's a, not a, 
end all be all solution yet, but I hope that it is uh, one day very soon. So the main point here is that Descript is an awesome consumer product. I think it's, okay. it's, it's semi-pro. Again, I'm using it, but I'm not using it by itself. It's an awesome consumer yeah. product at a really good price point. And it's going to do a lot of what average consumer podcasters want it to do. So that's why we're talking about it. Well, I think this is just like so much intel. And I want to kind of sum it up for us. I think we are saying that Riverside and Descript, they're both really great tools. And they're really great to have in your toolbox. I think I come back to that consumer product idea, not a pro product. So what kind of podcast are you putting out into the world? And how much are you going to have to do yourself? Because even though you're using AI, you're still having to do some of that work yourself. They're both trying to become complete podcast recording and editing solutions, but neither of them are there yet. And that's okay. I think we'll just continue to keep a watch on that. PodCircle uses both of them for what they're good at. That's what I would take away from what you were sharing. Mm-hmm. But almost all of it involves mixing these platforms with pro audio systems like Pro Tools yep. or providing software like Adobe Premiere for your video, just kind of mix and matching and using all the best of what everything does. Every single platform and every single tool does well on its own. Yep. So someday it'd be great if we have one complete tool that does everything. We don't right, right now. And I think I think we will one day. Yeah. I think we will. Yes. I mean, it's moving in the right direction for sure. And in some ways, these transcription software like Descript mm-hmm. have a leg up on yeah. some like Adobe. Like I know that Adobe Premiere, I think, uh, I don't know if it's a plugin or if it's native to the platform, but can transcribe mm-hmm. because I know our video editors do transcriptions um, and subtitles within. Mm-hmm. So there's some overlap, but having from a content standpoint, when you're going to pull out clips and subtitles yeah. and the whole thing, and you can, that's why I love Descript for our podcast. Just to see it all there. Yeah. It's all there it, except for the audio piece. So I'm not going to double back on what I've already talked about. <laughs> but I, I really do agree with that. And I think audio transcription is the way of the future. Apple's rolling out some things right now where every single episode they're going to create an AI yes. transcription for you. And um, Transistor, which is the host that we use, is strategically like doing that themselves so that you can have more control over what that transcription is because yeah. – we're going to trust Apple. Is it going to be an actual transcription or are there going to be weird spaces in it and all of that? So Transistor is working to create more comprehensive and I guess you would say like true transcriptions that actually are accurate is the word I want. So all that to say, if you are looking for a consumer quality, not pro quality, if you've got the time to mix and match these, these will get you to a good starting place. That's what we think from a recording and editing standpoint right now with the AI tools that are out there. Yeah, totally, Mackenzie. But like I said, for now, I'm going to keep using the tools that deliver the best product for our clients, whether that's full on Pro Tools for audio, Adobe Premiere for video, or if it's a little bit of a mix (laughs) of both between some of these transcription services. Every client's podcast is a little bit different. Their needs are different. I like using these new products, learning about them, learning what, what they're good at. We're going to keep doing that and we'll see how it goes. I think partnering with you, you know that you're getting a pro quality and you're getting someone who is going to take the best of all these different products for sure. Yeah, I hope so. That's the goal. Well, thank you guys for tuning in to this week's episode of the Pod Circle podcast. And if you're looking to partner with some experts in this space, that's what we do. We do a lot here at Pod Circle from production, editing, marketing. If there's a podcast problem you have, there's, we, have, we probably have a podcast solution. So we're here to help. Yeah. And so you can schedule a call with me using the link in our show notes, or you can simply email me directly at kyle at podcircle.com. Yeah. And if you are just getting started and you want to launch your show with ease, you can get our complete podcast starter kit at podcircle.com slash start. And we want to make sure that you subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode wherever you listen to your podcast, whether that's Spotify, Apple, or YouTube, where we do put our full episodes in video format. And as a reminder, if you are joining us on YouTube, we want to engage with you. So leave a comment and tell us how you are using AI or maybe you've used a couple of the products we reviewed today and you have a differing opinion and we want to hear about it. So make sure to engage with us and we will meet you in the comments. All right, y'all, we'll see you next time.